I bet it would help if I turned the microphone on, huh? Wow. Maybe I should do that, huh? Let's make sure it's the right microphone. See, earn while you learn, or in this case, don't earn anything, and still somehow manage to just make all kinds of noise. Yep, there we go. So you guys got to see, I guess, mute, mime while this was all happening. And uh, But yeah, we are making this up as we go along, literally. And if what just happened with the microphone is not an indicator of that, I don't know what is. There's actually a little blinky light up here that indicates that the microphone is muted. I was ignoring the blinky light. That's okay. We're still all kind of here. So hi, welcome to show 14. Um, wow. This has definitely become a thing. And it's a thing that I'm doing. And it's a thing that y'all are watching. And I appreciate the heck out of that. Um, some of you watch it live. Some of you come to it afterwards. And I think it's all very cool that y'all even bother with that. And listen to your crazy friend Tobias natter into a camera and bash away at music. But you know, could be much worse. I could be spending all of this on, oh, I don't know, Magic the Gathering cards. And Shadow's in the background going, yes! Sorry, dude. Um, I played Magic once. I actually had a Magic deck and was never good at it, and I gave it away. And if I had not given it away, that would be another way that I have managed to not make a bazillion dollars. Yep. Definitely. All right, so we've got a few songs to do here, and we're going to start with one of my classics. Um, this was going to be a name what I'm going to play show, but we didn't get a lot of people commenting, so I just decided to be a uh, I will do whatever the heck I feel like doing show. And that's okay. I know most a lot of you have lives you have to uh, lead regardless of how bizarre things get out here. And uh, so do I, which is why I'm never quite on time. Um, and why this is not a professional theatrical uh, set environment. Let me see here. I should indicate what song I'm going to play. That would be useful. Let me hit a button. Check this out. Ah, there we go. I still really am enjoying this. This? I'm pointing the wrong dang way. This thing over here that's currently over my right shoulder. Your left, my right. Um... It's a lot easier to change the titles. There we go. Do you know my friend from fair? Do you know my friend from fair? He's four foot taller, taller, and he's got brown or sandy hair. And he has a hat and tankard, and he wears a great big boots. And he wanders around in a loincloth or one of them doublet suits. I should have trimmed my nails. Well, you can't really get a manicure right now. Do you know my friend from fair? Do you know my friend from fair? He's a unique individual no one else can compare. For he always sings or juggles as he goes about the town. And he always has a great big sword that ought to narrow it down. Armed and ludicrous. Do you know my friend from fair? Do you know my friend from fair? If you saw him coming down the lane, you'd have to stop and stare. If don't, quote, don't recall if it's pickles, pretzels, or if it's popcorn that he sells. Get the words, but he's got him coming from a mile away on account that he wears bells. Somebody told me once the easiest way to be a stealthy ninja at the Renaissance Festival is to wear bells because nobody pays attention to them anyway. At least I think they said that. It was a little noisy at the time. Do you know my friend from fair? Do you know my friend from fair? He's the coolest guy in all the world, I truly do declare. If you saw my friend coming down the lane, you'd know of whom I speak. For he dresses like a pirate, now isn't that unique? Pirate. With pointy ears. Elf pirate. Gossamer wings. Fairy elf pirate. And a kilt. Scottish fairy elf pirate. And horns. Demon Scottish fairy elf pirate. And a foxtail. Nobody really knows why. Do you know my friend from fair? I think I saw him over there. His name is Wolf or Hawk or Raven or I think it might be Bear. Don't. We've never met outside of fair 
and I'm sure he'll be along. Hey, wait a minute. I'm talking about you. I guess I'll end the song. There we go. Ah, uh, yes, another fine song, marred only slightly by my own complete lack of technique. Um, I have an excuse today. Today's excuse brought to you by the Band-Aid Corporation because I have this interesting little condition on my hands where every so often, on my right hand, my body decides that I must be a reptile. And so it makes it all scaly and cracky and peely. It is psoriasis. It is the heartbreak of psoriasis. If you're old enough to remember that commercial, you're within my age demographic. And so uh, what happens is I got a little crack right here on this hand, right there on the finger, right there between the farthest out joint and the second joint. And it's like, ah, crap. So I put a Band-Aid on it. But this being the time and place that it is, I have to wash my hands a lot. And ain't nothing in the world slightly more uncomfortable than washing your hands and then wandering around dealing with a wet Band-Aid on your fingers. So I took it off. Only then realizing that the adhesive that the Band-Aid Corporation used for this particular flexible fabric bandage is the same one that they know. That is, uh, same one that they use in duct tape. So now I have sticky crap on my hands. Didn't really have time to go out and, you know, apply goo gone to it. And I don't know if you really want to apply a citrus-based salt for adhesives to bare flesh, especially when you've got a crack in it. Yes, Michael, we are, in fact, psoriasis brothers. Very careful high five. Yeah. Um, I love the song, Do My, My Friend From Fair. I uh, was used to joke that it would eventually collapse under its own weight. I think that the penultimate verse may have covered almost all the bases, but I do leave that open. I could add another verse. It would have to be like a real, real doozy, though. It would have to be like something that I haven't touched on yet at all. And uh, I'm not sure how that's going to work. But I do have the words stilts and kilts running through my head, and that's never going to be good for anybody involved. Let's move on to the next song, shall we? Ooh, yes. Um, this is one of those songs that I love to play, and that I apparently, it's a short, it's Schrodinger's song, because either I can play it wonderfully and there's no one here to hear it, or I can play it okay and when there are people who are here. Maybe it's the Heisenberg. It's the Heisenberg rehearsal principle. The songs that are good are the ones that you can play like no one's watching because literally no one is watching. Um, David Bowie tune. And, uh, you know. I met him at the fair. We spoke of where and when. Although he was not there, he comped me as a friend, which came as some surprise. My act never caught his eye. I thought he'd driven home a long, long time ago. Oh no. Never change my clothes. We're face to face with the man who lives at fair. I laughed and shook his hand and drank from his own flask. Went back to my homeland. Then I knew what I should have asked. I gazed a gazely stare at all the folks at fair. We should have driven home a long, long time ago. Oh no. change our clothes you face to face with the folks who live that fair
Oh no, not me. I never change my clothes. Your face to face with the man who lives out there. Okay, we got through that one pretty well. Um, that run is one of those runs that I can play if I think don't think about it too hard. If I start to think about it, then the Caterpillar's Dilemma just kind of grabs hold of my brain and slams it against the table six or seven times. And then I play like a doofus. Here's to online rehearsal with peer review. Now, the next one I'm going to do is an original song, and I'm really amused by it because it uses a lot of evocative, metaphorical language for something that actually happened. True story. I was going on a walking tour back in November, and we did, we're doing a walking tour. We've done a number of walking tours through the local uh, continuing education uh, organization from the North East Independent School District here in San Antonio. And the walking tours are fantastic. I absolutely love them. The guy that gives them is great at what he does. He loves the city. He loves all of the, uh, all of the stuff the background, the stories. And this was a tour of what's called Ghost Signs. Now, it's not a ghost tour. If you want a good ghost tour, I can I can point you out to a number of them, including this completely free plug for Madman Maverick, who can do some virtual ghost tours right now, if I am not mistaken. Um, you can check him out, Madman Maverick, on the bookface. Um, but this was a, side of ghost, uh, a tour of Ghost Signs, you know, Signs that have been painted onto the side of buildings for businesses, organizations, or, or products that had faded with time because these days doing big advertising murals on the side of buildings is no longer, you know, the, the vogue. And it's really there generally for, uh, you know, for nostalgic stuff. So this actually happened. I was wandering around. We had a great time. I was walking around doing all right. And I literally had the most Austin injury ever while I was on a walking tour looking at ghost signs I tripped over an entire bank of rental scooters yep all of them see even special effects by my phone um, tripped over an entire bank of rental scooters got both my feet under them the decks and went straight down and uh, fell the way that only a guy who weighs more than 300 pounds can fall. Um, apparently, I made a squeaking noise when I hit the floor, which was actually the concrete. And I lay there for a little while, thinking, right, okay, am I dead? No, all right, let's count the hit points. One. At which point, the tour guys are, are you all right? And I had to, you know, be, like, strong and brave and... Just taking inventory. And I landed on this side of my rib cage. I am barrel chested. If you've ever met me in person, I actually do have the distinct physical properties of a barrel. And um, on my rib cage here, and thankfully it didn't break anything, but I do feel like I uh, either strained or tore weird muscles right here in your uh, rib cage. And it's amazing how much you need your torso to do things from day to day. So that took about a month and change to heal up. So much so that when I like lay on the wrong side, I could actually feel bits in here sliding. I was like, that's not right. But I wrote this song. I initially wrote it for a cigar box guitar uh, that I have. Not one of Michael's. Um, this was from the little this little kit because it had a, a deeper tone. And I realized that I couldn't really play that all that well. So the song sat there for months. It's April now. I wrote it, literally wrote it in November. But um, I uh, rekeyed it. This is called I'm Falling Down. Tripped over scooters, looking at some signs. 
headed for the earth, but at the moment I feel fine. I'm falling down, I'm falling down, here comes the ground. Feel like a fool, how could it come to this? Thrown myself at the earth and I don't think I'll miss. I'm falling down, I'm falling down, here comes the ground. Bridge. It's an awful long way from upright to prone. But this is a journey I must take on my own. People gawking at me, wonder what I will do. But I'll start on this trip, I guess I better see it through. Coming down really fast, we're nearly at an end. Only thing that I can hope is gravity's my friend. I'm falling down, I'm falling down, here comes the ground. I'm falling down. I'm falling down. Yeah, that's that's the song. Um, I kind of like it this way. It, it's got a little bit more of a, a folky sound to it, a little bit more of a, a root sound. If I if I uh, can get the right tuning, I might be able to do that on a cigar box guitar. I just have to like restring everything two or three times. Um, that is kind of the the, the song that I, I, I always want to have something new for you guys, you know? I mean, let's be honest about this. Y'all are sitting around where you are watching this, where I am, and we all kind of like, well, it's, okay, that's kind of cool. That's kind of fun. But I, I have this drive to give you something new or newish at least, or at least a different way of doing it than I had done before. And as we get farther along, because we've done 14 of these things now, that's getting a little bit more challenging. It does make me go in and dig out stuff that I have had stuck in Evernote for a long time, like I'm falling down and turn it into something different. All right, let's do one more because it's my last show of the week because I'm taking Friday off. Friday is the day that Matthew goes out into the world and does stuff. Um, so I don't do the show then, but you know, I think I first, have I mentioned lately how much I appreciate you guys hanging out with me? Even if you come back to this afterwards, I mean, just the fact that I have a, a view count that is in the double digits does me a world of good. It really does. All right, let's let's do let's do a good uh, good last day last day uh, song here. And yeah, I'm going to repeat myself, and I don't care because it's just that good, and I really enjoy it a lot. Whew, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep, it's that one. <clears throat> it's a good song. It's a good song for a, the last song of the last set for this week. We're going to keep doing this until, you know, we're all really tired of it, or I'm really, really, really unable to perform anymore or my wife gets sick of it. Hello there, my old friend. Not too long ago it was till the end. We played outside in the barn rain. On our way up the road, started over again. Living the how it happens living life by the drop up and down the road in our worn out shoes talking about good things and singing the blues you went your way and I stayed behind we both knew it was just a matter of time living the dream of you on top my mind is aching and Lord, it won't stop. And 
That's how it happens living life for the draw. No waste of time, we're allowed to dance. Turn off the past and there's no easier way. Time's been between us, so means to the end. God, it's good to be here walking together, my friend. Living the dream. My mind stopped aching. And that's how it happens, living life by the drop. just feels tasty it's tasty song man and the, the guy who wrote it uh was stevie ray and jimmy ray's friend from back in the high school days back in north dallas where i also lived and managed to completely not meet any of them oh well uh yeah michael van like notes that yeah if you, you want to think about learning on the cigar box guitar dude do so do so a chord e chord F sharp minor, D7, you're done. It's just one of those songs that's written so well that it just... It's life affirming. It really is. All right, kind of a shorter show, but it's been a heck of a week. And I think we all kind of can say that. And it's been weird for a lot of different reasons, for the, the quarantine reasons, for political reasons, for all that other stuff. Do what you need to do to get by. Do not give in to despair. Let's, uh, let's go through the credits, shall we? First and foremost, in the event that you happen to have some disposable income or know of someone who is easily convinced and has disposable income, you can aim them at the tip jars over here. That's uh, paypal.me and ko-fi.com. The Adequate in both cases. You can find me on The Adequate on Instagram, here on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, you can see the, uh, the Patreon over this side right here. I currently have four Patreon patrons. I'll be thanking them briefly in a moment. Yeah, my YouTube channel is where I keep all of the stuff there, youtube.com slash mplaguerre, because... The Adequate was already taken. That's all right. And, of course, Facebook.com slash The Adequate. You'll find me there as well. I also copy the stuff over to the Tobias The Adequate page because, hey, why not? It's also on my Tumblr, which is actually The Adequate. Strange, huh? On Reddit, I'm Adequate Troubadour, but that's another story entirely. Um, SoundCloud. I told you about SoundCloud last time. I can show you it now. SoundCloud.com slash Matthew dash Laguerre. Uh, that's where I do keep some of the stuff that I've recorded that is audio only. And I've done some multi-track stuff. The uh, four-part harmony of Reaver Johnny Reaver is up there, along with 30 to 50 Feral Hogs, Ham, uh, a overwhelming surplus of Diggity, and uh, I Wear No Pants, and a bunch of, Got No Pants, and a bunch of other stuff that I've done here and there. I will be trying to put more stuff out. I am kind of, sort of, working on... A, um, a a band camp page, but I need like content. I need to sit down and do content, and well, you know, things. These shows are a lot easier to do because I can just do them. I have a terrible issue with perfection, as many other people do. It's just when I'm doing a live show, I can be imperfect because that's part of the appeal. It's DIY. It's earn while you learn. It's why the heck not. Uh, Carpe Diem Comics is the official emotional support comic shop of. The Adequate Podcast, The Troubadour Show, this show, me, yeah, call it, whatever you want to. Uh, they are, of course, in McKinney, Texas, and they are currently doing mail order via their site, store site, which is Carpe Diem Comics Online dot square dot site. They are gradually rolling in all of the inventory that they have in this shop. They don't have it all, but if you're looking for something, drop them a line, because I'm pretty sure if they have it, they can sell it to you. And that'll make everybody happy. And once again, pretty damn sure today is not that day. 
Some of you know what I'm talking about. Um, we were talking about Shadow a bit later today, as a matter of fact, for the podcast. Let's see here. I want to thank John and Brian and Lorene and Alicia for my four mighty Patreon patrons. Uh, you can support Adequacy in Our Lifetime over here at patreon.com slash theadequate. Uh, it's 12, the lowest rate is 12 bucks for the year, and I just keep doing this crap, so y'all basically are trying, I'm trying to give you as much content as possible, because I am driven and stupid and insane. Um, there's, uh, some previews that are actually happening, because I'm motivated to do it and get those out, so that's kind of fun and cool, and that will continue to go on forever and ever and ever, whether I'm a magician, a musician, a rambling idiot, or eventually I'll just be lying in a chair like, Comedy! And if somebody captures that and turns that into a, uh, an animated GIF, I I may have to do that myself, actually. I do have a set of uh, Tobias reaction meme images. And if you ask nicely in in IM, I will point you to the, the folder on that on Google Drive, and you can use me to heckle anybody you want to. Um... I think this day, today we actually had a little bit better with the quality. I found the uh, camera settings for this camera, which is built into this laptop. I am working on getting an external camera with a little ring light that's built into it, so we have a consistent bit of light. We always will have the glowy window back here for as long as we're shooting in this room. When we are shooting in a different room, there will be different challenges and different problems that I will have because, you know, that's how this works. All right. That's everything. Thank you all so very much. Uh, feel free to spread this work. Share it around. Throw it at people. Conf send it to your friends. Send it to your enemies. It will confuse them. Um, thank you all very much. You all take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. And let's be careful out there. And you all be good. I will talk to you all on Monday. Let's see if I can make this happen. I was going for a dramatic fade didn't happen because I'm not sure what I'm doing here. It's okay. We'll do the trend. We'll do it here. Maybe. We might. Just. Maybe. If we're lucky. Check this out. Dramatic fade to black. Wow. That's cool. <laughs>